In 2015, Trooper Cross was performing a routine traffic stop from 50 feet away, Trooper Cross heard Thurai Raja, who was driving by, yell, F*** you! out of his car window. Trooper Cross ended the traffic stop of the van and pursued Thurai Raja. This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. Arkansas State Trooper Legarian Cross appeals the district court's denial of qualified immunity on summary judgment against Eric Roshan Thurairaja, Mr. T's, claims of First Amendment retaliation and Fourth Amendment unreasonable seizure. This 42 U.S.C. 1983 lawsuit stems from Trooper Cross's arrest of Mr. T for disorderly conduct after Mr. T yelled a two-word expletive at him from a moving vehicle. Trooper Cross believed the shout constituted unreasonable or excessive noise in violation of state law. The district court determined that Trooper Cross's action violated Mr. T's clearly established constitutional rights. We agree with that analysis and affirm the denial of qualified immunity. Okay, so a couple things here. If you've been a longtime viewer of the channel, you might be like jumping up and down right now because everything just came together for you. You know what qualified immunity is, you know what summary judgment is, you know what uh, a 42 USC 1983 lawsuit is. But if you don't know those things, Qualified immunity is the law or rule that protects police officers doing their duties from a personal lawsuit. So if my rights are allegedly violated, but the officer is doing their job properly, then the officer can't be sued personally. So that means that if you're a police officer, you're protected. And we want this. We want police officers to be able to do their jobs, confident that if they do their job, then they'll be protected. So long as they follow the rules, they're protected. But if they don't follow the rules in a specific way, if they don't follow the rules and they violate a clearly established constitutional right that is clearly established by law or precedent, However, the level of knowledge is not the same as a practicing lawyer in the field or competent lawyer in the field or judge or something like that. It's a little bit less than that, but you can break through qualified immunity, which is what we're doing here. The 42 U.S.C. 1983 lawsuit is a civil rights lawsuit. If a state or state actor uh, violates your civil rights in really any way, you can sue them for damages, including costs. And then summary judgment is so we avoid trial. We're basically having a trial, but we're not going to have a trial in front of people. We're going to have a trial on the papers and hand them to a judge and the judge will look at them. We build a record and there's rules about that. That's the rules of evidence and then and procedure. And once we've built the record properly, we submit our, our summary judgment motions and the, the judge will review the summary judgment motions and responses to them and all that. And then the judge will basically rule as if there had been a trial, but using the papers instead, if it's possible. And there's a standard for that and everything too. Sorry for the long explanation, but now you know where we are. In 2015, Trooper Cross was performing a routine traffic stop on a van pulled to the shoulder of a busy five-lane highway in Fort Smith, Arkansas. From 50 feet away, Trooper Cross heard Thurai Raja, who I'm going to call Mr. T, who was driving by, yell, F*** you! out of his car window. The van's occupants were a mother and her two young children. Mr. T was driving at about 35 miles per hour on the far lane of the road moving in the opposite direction. Trooper Cross observed the two children in the van react to the yell. Trooper Cross ended the traffic stop of the van and pursued Thurai Raja. Stopped him, arrested him, cited him for violating Arkansas's disorderly conduct law. Trooper Cross believed the shout constituted unreasonable or excessive noise under the law. Cross argues in his briefing that he believed the disorderly conduct statute could also have been violated on account of the obscene nature of the language. At oral argument, however, he waived all reliance on this statutory section. 
Mr. T spent several hours in jail, but then was released and all charges dropped. He filed a Section 1983 lawsuit against Trooper Cross, alleging the trooper violated his First Amendment right to be free from retaliation and his Fourth Amendment right to be free from unreasonable seizure. Trooper Cross moved for summary judgment on the basis of qualified immunity. The district court denied qualified immunity on both claims after concluding that the arrest violated Mr. T's clearly established constitutional rights. On appeal, Trooper Cross asks us to reverse the district court's denial of qualified immunity. Qualified immunity will shield a state actor like Trooper Cross from legal liability unless one, he violated a constitutional right and two, that constitutional right was clearly established so that a reasonable officer would know of the right at the time of the alleged violation. This is Pearson v. Callahan, a 2009 Supreme Court case, if you would like to read further. We review the denial of qualified immunity de novo, or brand new, viewing the record in the light most favorable to Mr. T, or Thurai Raja, and drawing all inferences in his favor. This is the summary judgment standard. If we find that either prong is not satisfied, that the constitutional rights were not violated, or that any violated right was not so clearly established as a reasonable officer would have known that his actions were unlawful, then qualified immunity will apply. Trooper Cross contends that he is entitled to qualified immunity on the Fourth Amendment claim for unreasonable seizure because one, he had probable cause, or at least arguable probable cause, to arrest Mr. T for violating Arkansas's disorderly conduct statute. Or two, the relevant law pertaining to the disorderly conduct statute is not sufficiently clear as to provide notice that an arrest violates the Fourth Amendment. Quote, a warrantless arrest is consistent with the Fourth Amendment if it is supported by probable cause, and an officer is entitled to qualified immunity if there is at least arguable probable cause. An officer possesses probable cause to effectuate a warrantless arrest when the totality of the circumstances at the time of the arrest are sufficient to lead a reasonable person to believe that the defendant has committed or is committing an offense. Arguable probable cause exists if Thurai Raj's arrest was based on objectively reasonable, even if mistaken, belief that the arrest was based in probable cause. Arguable probable cause provides law enforcement officers in a qualified immunity analysis an even wider berth for mistaken judgments than the probable cause standard affords a reasonable person. Analyzing whether arguable probable cause exists necessarily includes consideration of probable cause. In other words, Trooper Cross is protected by qualified immunity if a reasonable officer in his shoes would have reasonably believed, even if mistaken, based on objective facts, that Thurai Raja was violating the disorderly conduct statute's excessive noise prohibition by shouting the two-word insult from a moving vehicle with an unamplified human voice. The disorderly conduct statute reads, quote, a person commits the offense of disorderly conduct if, with the purpose to cause public inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm, or recklessly creates a risk of public inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm, he or she makes unreasonable or excessive noise. Under the statute, the verbal content of Thurai Raja's yell is irrelevant. The statute does not penalize offensive speech, only unreasonable or excessive noise. Arkansas courts have not previously concluded that a two-word yell could violate the disorderly conduct statute's unreasonable or excessive noise provision. To be sure, shouting can form the basis of a disorderly conduct violation. Those cases where shouting was part of a scenario that resulted in a finding of disorderly conduct, however, involved extended loud shouting and disruptive behavior or amplified sound. As the district court noted, context matters in analyzing the facts. In no case has a two-word unamplified outburst constituted disorderly conduct. And I'm going to skip the footnote here. Actually, maybe let's not. There was a case finding at least arguable probable cause existed when persons were utilizing microphones and amplifiers for an extended period of time and several businesses complained, traffic was disrupted, and the noise could be heard a block away continuously. 
Another case, a man shouting and cursing at officers as they were arresting juvenile suspects, refusing police commands to back away, shouting and cursing at a store clerk, and pounding on a store window. Um, another case, finding disorderly conduct where a man discharged from a medical center demands drugs and a ride home in the presence of patients and staff, hollering and yelling for about 15 minutes and using profanity, and then ranting and using profanity after police were called. Arkansas precedent declining to uphold a disorderly conduct charge is also illustrative. In MJ v. State, the Arkansas Court of Appeals held that 20 seconds of public shouting involving foul language did not establish disorderly conduct. Mr. T's shout was unamplified and fleeting. No crowd gathered because of it. City traffic was not affected. No complaints were lodged by anyone in the community. Business was not interrupted, nor were an, or an officer's orders disobeyed. Thurai Raja's conduct may have been offensive, but it was not an unreasonable or excessive noise. Trooper Cross lacked even arguable probable cause for an arrest and thus violated his Fourth Amendment right to be free from unreasonable seizure. Mr. T's Fourth Amendment right to be free from unreasonable search and seizure was clearly established at the time of his arrest. It was clearly established in 2013 that a warrantless arrest unsupported by probable cause violates the Fourth Amendment and no contrary precedent was issued between 2013 and 15 when Trooper Cross arrested Mr. T. Accordingly, we affirm the denial of qualified immunity for the Fourth Amendment claim. Thurairaja also alleges that his shout was protected by First Amendment speech. As protected First Amendment speech, it should be free from retaliatory government actions. To prove such a violation, he must show that he was arrested in retaliation for a protected speech activity. This claim requires a four-part showing that Mr. T engaged in protected activity, that Trooper Cross took adverse action to chill or would that would chill a person of ordinary firmness from continuing in the activity, the adverse action was motivated by his exercise, by Mr. T's exercise of the protected activity, and there was a lack of probable cause or arguable probable cause. This is the Eighth Circuit case of Hoyland v. McMenemy. All four prongs are satisfied here. First, Mr. T's profane shout was protected activity. See Cohen v. California, holding that a defendant walked through a courthouse corridor wearing a jacket bearing the words, the draft in place where women and children were present and showed no intent to incite disobedience, the state lacked power to punish the defendant for the underlying content of the message the inscription conveyed. Second, Trooper Cross's arrest was an action that would chill continued activity by a person of ordinary firmness. As we recognized in Hoyland, there can be little doubt that, or, that being arrested for exercising the right to free speech would chill a person of ordinary firmness from exercising that right in the future. And according to a fair reading of Trooper Cross's affidavit, the arrest was motivated at least in part by the content of the shout. Finally, as discussed above, Cross had neither probable cause nor arguable probable cause to arrest Thurai Raja. Because we conclude that Trooper Cross lacked even arguable probable cause and thus violated the Fourth Amendment right to be free from unreasonable seizure, the Supreme Court's recent decision holding that a First Amendment retaliatory arrest claim fails as a matter of law when the arrest is based on probable cause is in opposite. Thurairaja's First Amendment right to be free from retaliation was clearly established at the time of his arrest. The law is settled that as a general matter, the First Amendment prohibits government officials from subjecting an individual to retaliatory claims for speaking out. With limited exceptions not relevant here, even profanity is protected speech. Criticism of law enforcement officers, even with profanity, is protected speech. Accordingly, we hold that the district court did not err by denying qualified immunity to Trooper Cross for the First Amendment claim. For the foregoing reasons, we affirm the district court's order denying qualified immunity. And that is how quickly an officer can lose qualified immunity by basically overreacting and, and not following the law. Um, and you see the standard there is, is just a little bit looser than, than what we would hold a citizen to. So an officer needs arguable probable cause 
whereas you know any, any of any of us can't just simply make arguments and have the arguments be our actual defense no the arguments have to be correct in order for them to be our defense but if the if the officers mistake is is reasonable then then they're off the hook for qualified immunity that doesn't necessarily mean that the department is off the hook for their actions under what we would call a respondeat superior basically your your boss is responsible for your actions or your your company is responsible for your actions um but uh it, it would take qualified immunity off the table so let me know what you think of that in the comments below i don't know that anything has happened yet i think this has just been filed this was this was brand new this was june 3rd so this was six days ago and now i imagine there will be some talk about either settling on the amount that's owed you know whatever the, the damages are for the violation or if there's enough uh, stubbornness on one or both sides then this will have to go to a trial on damages so there won't does it doesn't appear to be necessary to have a trial on the qualified immunity thing, but rather now we'll have a trial on what what rights were violated and what damages there are. If Trooper Cross is smart, no offense, I don't mean that as a derogatory thing, I just mean like, you know, if you're smart, you're making a good decision, you'd probably want to settle this. But that also requires two parties and maybe, maybe, um, what's his name, uh, the, the Mr. T. Maybe Mr. T is going to be demanding more than Trooper Cross is willing to pay. I don't know. We'll see what happens. They will try and follow up on that and let you know. So thank you for joining us. That is our show. This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. Thank you to our supporters for the month of June. This channel would not exist without your financial support. At the $50 level, thank you to John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Kyle Mudrock, Evie, Michael Pierce, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Aspernari, and Snorri Wazatsky. Thank you very much for your support at the $50 level. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters scrolling on the LED panel behind me and in the description below. You're all in the description below. And uh, thank you very much for your support. We'll drop these these stories about once per day so you can expect that if you click that bell you'll get about one lawful masses story per day otherwise just click the subscription button and you'll get us in your feed from time to time and hopefully you give us a click so uh if you have any particular stories you'd like to see us uh do one of these analyses on or reviews on give us a, a drop us a line you can find us at twitter at leonard j french or you can find us uh, on Discord. I think there's a link in the description. And you can email us at business at lawfulmasses.com. I think Brandon checks that one. So anyway, thank you for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I will see you in the videos that drop. Have a great second week of June. I love you all. 